I'm Pastor George Borkhart, and this is another Higher Things video short. Critical theory and critical race theory. Woke Wednesday goes academic. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, pass it on that faith to the next generation. Like our videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Get the app. It's available on all the major platforms. And donate. HigherThings.org slash giving. Your tax-deductible gift keeps Higher Things filling the ears of young people all over the world with a saving gospel. And they need this gospel in these dark times. This is episode number 1001. You know, it's like we should have some Space Odyssey music in the background. Da, <laughs> da, 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 Woke Wednesday. Now we do. Not, it's not the thousandth episode of Woke Wednesday, but it is a thousand and one episode of Higher Things video shorts. Uh, Woke Wednesday today. That means Erica Jacoby, the executive director of Higher Things, former high school teacher and woke aficionado. Oh. I don't even know what that word means. But she's going to answer one? our woke questions or today. Aficionado? Both of those. Both of those. Erica, <laughs> what is critical theory and what is its, what is it history? Okay, I'm going to answer that. But first, I want to say thank you very much for all that you do for a thousand episodes of video shorts. Um, just a huge thank you. Thank you for sharing the gospel with the youth. Um, it's a big deal. So thank you. I want to take a moment to say that, getting aside. Um, I'm actually nervous today, Pastor Borghart, about this, talking about this. This is a, this is a, this is a touchy topic, and it's um, kind of a big one right now, and I want to make sure we handle it well. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and start with critical theory. We're going to get to critical race theory. So when, you, when we talk about this, think of critical theory as the parent. And critical race theory is kind of an offshoot, right? Like like the offspring of critical theory. Um, just because I like to be funny and playful, I always look up uh, definitions on Urban Dictionary because I think it's funny. Um, and so I'd like to give you first the critical theory definition on Urban Dictionary, which is a university department from which you can get a degree in being offended. <laughs> I thought that was fun. We do anyway, not we have to have a encourage the use of that website on this broadcast, but right, it's still right, a funny right, definition. Right. All right. Right. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes they do, I mean, in a, in a funny, playful, kind of sarcastic way, they kind of hit the nail on the head. But um, so let's talk about cri criti the history of critical theory itself. And um, I am going to have George drop in some links because I wa don't want to miss Sake of some of the research I did. So if you want to see where I got it or where I got this information and kind of go down the rabbit hole, you'll be welcome to. So George will drop some of those in, in there. So um, it kind of has a narrow and a broad meaning, uh, critical theory in, um, in the social sciences. Um, so in the narrow sense, it um, came from a few generations of German philosophers and social theorists um, in the Marxist tradition. Um, and they came out of what was called the Frankfurt School. And according to those theorists, um, a critical theory may be distinguished from a traditional theory um, according to a specific practical purpose. And that purpose is um, it seeks human emancipation from slavery, acts as a liberating influence, and works to create a world which satis satisfies the needs and powers of human beings. Um, so it sees society in terms of power structures, right? Um, and so uh, the theories aim at trying to sort of explain and transform all circumstances that enslave human beings. And that's where we have kind of the offshoots of critical theory that have come about um, in the broader sense, which we're going to talk about one of them today. So there you go. Critical theory in a nutshell kind of background. Okay, so where do we see critical theory today? Okay, so the offshoots of this school of thought or this critical theory we can see today in many feminist theories and approaches to conducting 
the social sciences. Um, so it's found in critical race theory, which we'll talk about today, uh, cultural theory, gender theory, queer theory, as well as in media theory and media studies. Now, I'm not going to define all of those. You can kind of look those up on your own. We're just going to talk about critical race theory today. Um, and the definition of that, um, I got actually from Britannica.com. Um, we'll drop that link in there as well. But critical race theory is um, the law and legal institution, the, the theory that says that law and legal institutions are inherently racist and that race itself, instead of being uh, biologically grounded and natural, is socially is a socially constructed concept that is used by, by white people to further their economic and political interests at the expense of people of color. So that's sort of critical race theory. And um, you can kind of you can kind of see some of this playing out. And this is where I get nervous to talk about it. So I actually chose to uh, give you examples um, of what's going on in the United Kingdom uh, with the Black Lives Movement. Now, um, the Black Lives Movement here and in the UK as well, um, are their, their sort of underpinnings are critical race theory. So, um, the the Minister for Equalities, um, Kemi Badenoch is her name, um, gave a rather um, resounding uh, critique of the Black Lives Movement about a month ago and on critical race theory um, when she stood in the House in Britain uh, and gave a talk. Um, and she said that critical race theory is rather dangerous um, because it's sort of committed, not not just because it's committed to dismantling the market of capitalism, right? It has kind of Marxist underpinning, socialistic sort of underpinnings, um, but the eventual abolition of the police. Uh, and she argued that I, it's an ideology that sees blackness as victimhood and whiteness as oppression. Um, so their whole her whole reason for bringing it up was she didn't want to see teachers teaching they're white students about inherited racial guilt um, and because teaching that is not impartial um, and, and therefore has no place in school. Um, and she said te the teaching of it though, as though it were a fact, right? Not just a co contested political idea is dangerous. And we actually have some of that going on, uh, you could argue in our country uh, with the uh, 1619 project um, which you can look into that as well, where they're having this taught in, pub in the public school system. And you just sort of need to be a little bit aware of, when you say Black Lives Matter, um, what, what sort of what that brings with it. Because I would, I personally would never say, of course, Black Lives Matter. Uh, Christ died for all, right? Um, I should mention too, I will put this link in there, her, her talk, this lady that I referenced in the UK, um, who happens to be black, um, but, but was really, I mean, they really went after her for that and said not nice things, um, about her race as well. Um, there are certain terms that they use for folks who sort of push back against BLM, um, and they did this to her as well. So, so again, I mean, I guess it's my point. I've kind of explained critical race theory. I've kind of given you an example of how it's playing out in society. I chose the UK um, just because that felt a little easier to me, I'll be quite honest. Um, but what do you think, Pastor Borghart? Is critical race theory, as I've explained it to you, kind of giving you an example, and we are pressed for time, is it compatible with a Christian worldview? Um, what do you think? Um, in Christ, there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. So when it comes to salvation, no one is particularly closer to God or farther to God based upon something them. Um, we, we don't stand before God closer if we're a certain color and farther if we're not. Um, also, we don't stand closer to God if we're a certain tribe and farther to God if we're not. So Jews are not closer to God than Gentiles. Uh, the idea that we all are inherently um, skewed to hate each other is, is Christian, um, in the sense that that's original sin in curvatus inset. We are turned inward. And so we love ourselves more than we love other people. 
But that does not depend on anybody's race or creed or um, nationality or color. And so um, I could see how some folks would sort of gravitate. So like if we are conceived and born in sin, then it would it would it would it would sort of also be true that we are conceived and born racists, except that's not all entirely that's 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 not what that's about. Um, and you're not certainly out of it if you're a certain color or and I think all of this causes us to slow down. Slow down, you crazy child. Um oh, Billy Joel. I, I, you never see when you're wrong, but you can't always see when you're right. You're right. I uh, see like there's a um, semantic overload occurring with this. And what I mean by that is there's the phrase that black lives matter and everybody's for it. No one should be afraid when they, um, except criminals, when they're, when they're, um, when they're stopped by the police and they certainly shouldn't be afraid if they are a certain nationality or color or race. No, people should be treated the same under the law. People should have the same opportunities under the law, okay? Now, that and the fact that black lives matter specifically, um, we're all for. Because Christ, as you said, died for all. The issue becomes with the group Black Lives Matter, which grabs a bunch of Marxist stuff as well, a bunch of anti-Christian um worldview, like the nuclear family is bad. That's one of their tenants, the Black Lives Matter tenants. Um, so a mom and a dad with children and they're married. Um, that's bad. Again, that's Christianity. Um, so there's a lot of things that we want to sort of slow down. So like, are we okay with the fact that all, that Black Lives Matter? Yes. Are we okay with the group? No. No. And so we have to sort of, and I, I think that may be something I want to say that I don't want to say that it's deliberately semantically overloaded or vague, but I do want to say we have to slow down. So like I and you are for every life mattering, especially those who are persecuted, especially those who suffer. And if, if, and since that is uh, the black community, we are definitely for uh, all colors mattering and especially blacks mattering before the law. We are not for any elements or groups which are antithetical to the Christian faith, promoting hate or 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 that one race is evil and one race is not. That is as evil as in the um in the early 1900s when um the mark of Cain was designated as specifically the black folks. That's just that's evil. It's equally evil that we as a certain color bear guilt or or evil because of that color we wear. Both of those are equally in, uh, evil in the Christian faith. So this is a tough thing to navigate. I can see why you'd be a little afraid because here we are two white folks and we're not supposed to be talking about this as white folks other than saying simply, we've sinned, forgive us. Right, right, yeah. And we could all yeah. confess that, that we've sinned, forgive us. But to confess a sin that we don't possess, right. I don't know, is helpful. Your thoughts right. here that we've gone over. Well, well I was just going to quickly say, as I read some of the different incidences and things that have gone on, um, as a Christian, I just see a lot of commandments that we could do better with. Um, there's the fourth commandment, o obeying authority, um, treat treating the police. I mean, Certainly the police have not been perfect. Um, however, they are an authority. Um, they are to be paid and, um, you know, and certainly uh, officers and so forth do not deserve to be harmed or hurt. That That's not our, um, that's not our vocation. That's not our right to do. Um, there's the eighth commandment. Um, there's, uh, you know, um, not putting the best construction on what our neighbor says and does and assuming that they're sort of, they're racist. There's hate. There's the fifth commandment. Um, so there's just a lot of things as a Christian. I think we um, were called to love and serve and um, regardless of what color you are, and we need to uh, sort of love and serve and use the commandments to kind of inform us on how we're to 
how to how we're to operate in our society, and even though we don't agree with everything that's going on. Um, but I'm not a I'm not a theologian, nor am I a social scientist, um, and I'm not sure I'm as woke as you think I am. Uh, but that's my take on it. Um, it's confusing. Uh, even you know, if you there's the feminist theory, right, that comes out of crit- critical theory, and when I think about that, of course, as a woman, there have been times where I've encountered the glass ceiling, or I haven't. I felt that I've had the advantages sometimes that men have had, but I don't see how I should extrapolate from that, that I need men to, um, I need, I need to put men down for me to be elevated. If that makes sense. If I I need to, yeah. We've got this reoccurring theme as sinners that we are oppressed. So we oppress others. Evil occurs to us. So we, we do evil to others. And that is the antithesis of the Christian faith, where we are to return good for evil and overcome evil with good, with Jesus' death and resurrection. So this topic does call us to cause us to love one another, to say, hey, we're going to actively love one another, and we're going to work through our differences, and we're going to pray for one another. And when we're insensitive, we're going to ask for help. And when we're um, hypersensitive, we're going to slow down. Um, we're not going to rush to judgment. We're going to be slow to speak, quick to hear, and quick to listen. Good stuff. Good stuff. Erica Jacoby. I'd love some gospel. I'd love some gospel going out. I hate to interrupt you, but we just had a whole lot of law. How about a little gospel going out? Well, we had, there was gospel in the in the Christ died for all. So I, I think yeah. uh, I'm, I'm one to good, always pull the gospel good. string, but there, Christ died for all. And that's why we love. We love because he first yeah. loved us. Calvary much, not in a way of love me and put me as more important. Um, love me because Christ died for me and Christ died for you too. And that's the center of our love. Erica Jacoby is the executive director of Higher Things. She is also uh, a former uh, uh, school teacher, high school teacher, and the face that runs the place known as Higher Things. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Love builds up. Hate tears down. Love raises others up. Hate pushes others down. And we see that most on the cross of Christ. Think about that when it comes to all theories which would identify any individual or any group of individuals as hateful solely because of something them. I'm Pastor George Barkhart. Christ died for us all. And this has been another Higher Things video short.